Good morning from day four of the Lofoten crossing. Oh, I look horrible, <laughs> but that's life. I hope that the scenery behind me can equalize the scenery of my face. Hmm, <laughs> look at that. Okay, back to the tent and packing together, maybe having a coffee and then yeah, let's go. Or as I like to say, I am speed. Okay, <clears throat> breakfast is finished, finished. <laughs> porridge and coffee, as always. Uh, with my phone here, in order to read you the data of today's uh, day. <laughs> wake up, wake up, Matsi. It's a bit complicated because um, today, actually the beginning of the next stage of the Lofoten crossing is uh, a bit away <laughs> so it would mean that we uh, hitchhike or take a bus from here to the beginning of the next hike uh, so normally the day then without road would already be 27 kilometers and that's and 1360 meters of elevation change it goes like three times up and down on the profile. And here my auto active app says it's 10 hours already. <laughs> yeah, crazy. Uh, then, yeah, if you don't, the road has two parts here. Yeah? One is the E10, which is the main road. And one is one quite more quiet road. The quiet road is not that problem. The quiet road is seven-ish kilometers and the main road the e10 is eight kilometers ish so it's like 15 kilometers walking on the road just to get to the start of today's hike yeah yeah i still don't know what i do i know some people hitchhike it there's a bus which Helps you at least with the E10, but not with that smaller road. I don't like the feeling of not hiking it, because it's a through hike and not a through hitch hike. Yeah. So I feel tempted to walk it, but it will be very crazy. Let's see. At the moment, I feel good. The first morning that I feel good, didn't sleep too long. I woke up at 6 I think. 6.30. So, but it's good for a tent night for me. Mm, I feel rested. I feel nothing is hurting at the moment. So let's see how it, how it goes when I start walking. If I feel good, I will start walking on the road and then I will see how much traffic is there. If it sucks, I can still hitchhike or catch the bus. For sure the other road then, uh, this is a side road, uh, there's no bus there and if there are no cars there then there's also no hitchhiking. That one I will road, but I uh, did that one I will walk. But yeah, the E10 I could walk, take the bus or hitchhike. Let's see it that way. All right, I hope that clarifies today a little bit. There were, were many numbers. So I had to sit down and read it to you because I will not remember all these numbers when I'm walking. <laughs> okay, oh, 10 past 8, let's go, it's a long day. Okay, packed. Thank you, spot. Thank you, dining spot. <laughs> okay, start the day. 
back on the main path, looking back with my campsite over there. Oops, did the camera catch it? I will put an arrow there. Yeah, well, from here, from far away, I don't think you could see the tent. But if you get closer and you're on this main path for sure, you will be able to see the tent. Uh, but that's not the point, right? It's, it's not forbidden here. It's allowed. So even if someone sees the tent, then like, yeah, whatever, happy camping. Uh, I will put a link in the description of uh, a tourist, tourist map, or tourist map, uh, an online map that I found that shows you all the camping restrictions here. Uh, it's very nice uh, because especially uh, the restrictions of the restriction of 150 meters away from houses yeah, or from any kind of property, private property. Uh, sometimes you cannot see the house. It might be in the forest and you're 20 meters away from it and you think, oh, it's fine to camp here, but you're in the garden of the house. So it's nice to have this, have the map and then it has a 150 radios in yellow on that on that map and that helps a lot and here there was nothing the first uh, camping restriction will come that direction when the first house uh, when we see the first house I think I slept well at this spot because it is so quiet here not even birds super quiet at least for my ears Just nothing. So that helped at night uh, because normally in a wild camp, you know, I always hear this, hear this different noises and I think, oh, what is it? What is it? What is it? Is it an animal? And here it was nothing, so it was easy to relax. Okay, there was, there was actually was a bird. I checked the time, it was around 1 1 20 a.m. <laughs> I woke up because there was a bird noise. I was singing like shoot, shoot, shoot. and I think it was, was close to my tent. And I also heard it on the ground or on the trees. But yeah, didn't do anything. <laughs> I think it helps, of course, if you don't, don't leave any food or stuff outside. That's never do that. Animals get interested and attracted by, by your food. Okay, depending on where you are, what country, what place, it also doesn't help to put the food into the tent, yeah, because some animals have such good noses, they can smell it through the bag, through the backpack, through the tent, like bears, for example. Oh, that's why you have these bear containers where you put all your food at night and you put away from the camp. Or you would never cook or prepare fish or meat or anything next to your tent. You always go away from, you cook a bit away from where you sleep. That's the rule. I did it. Did the same here, but not for for animal reasons, but just for comfort. It was nice to have the tent and the green, and but there was no place to sit, so I went down to the beach. Also because of fire hazard. Uh, looks wet, but also dry here. So I read that there's some fire danger, so I didn't want to uh, start my my gas cooker right in, in the field or something, so I went down to the beach. There are no bears here on the Lofoten Islands, not that I know. Also not polar bears, fingers crossed. Uh, the only dangerous animal here is the moose, I would say. Uh, well, it's not going to eat you or it's not Normally, completely not interested in you. Yeah? It's not, but it's an animal, and it does what all animals do. Uh, the mother 
would always defend the kids or the calves. So it's a mom and it has a calf and you surprise it, it will attack. Attack in terms of that it runs to you and and it's yeah, you don't want moose are big. <laughs> What's the plural of moose? Is it meat? Oh quality content this morning. <laughs> so yeah, they're big. And that's why I would say rule of thumb is the same then in bear country if you walk through the forest where you think okay I could surprise the moose here just make some noise that's it that's why I sometimes talk to the camera or I talk to myself even without the camera on I sing to myself or I just say my motivational speech I am speed I am speed I am so much speed <laughs> So, my eyes are not 100% good anymore. I should actually wear glasses, but I get along. But if something is far away, uh, I've, I've struggled to identify it. And there was something like just up there in the mountains, in the bushes, like, I don't know, 200 meters away. And to me, I, I saw it and immediately thought, oh, that's a moose. It did not move. I was just standing there, so I took my camera and zoomed in as good as I could. But even the camera I was too far away for the camera, could not get the sharp picture. So I had an eye on it, but it did not move the whole evening. So after one hour, I still hadn't moved. So I thought, okay, that's probably a rock or, or a tree trunk. Or <laughs> yeah. First house is here, also over there, the trees, the white one over there. Yeah. Uh, that's like around 20 minutes from where I camped. That was the reason why I tried to find the camp there, because here it's all very difficult. Everything is within 150 meters of these houses. There's a tiny little spot, in theory, if you really check the radiuses and say, okay, ah, there's actually a little square meter that's not inside of the restriction. But I think that's a dump, because the reason for these restrictions is that you don't disturb the people. Eh? And you are still there, visible, and it sucks. Pity the camera cannot capture the smell. Oh, it smells really nice, these flowers here. Yeah, on a gravel road now. Back in civilization, kind of. Sorry that I talk so much this morning, but I don't know if you have noticed that my voice is a bit different. At least for me, it feels much easier to talk. The first two days or three days, my voice was very, how can I say, was not, not strong and had problems to get sounds out. And for me, that's always a sign of that I'm weak. Something is not okay. My voice is always the first indicator of that I get sick or I don't have energy. So good to have the feeling back of a voice. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Hmm. 
Okay, reach the end of the dead dead road. <laughs> the gravel road. Yeah, it's also a dead end. <laughs> okay, reach the end. If you haven't found anything to camp so far and you come down there, I think that's your last chance. Well not last chance, but that's an option. Yeah. Looks a bit uneven but I've seen people in videos camping here. It's just right next to the street. However, maybe not so much traffic at night. since 15 minutes it's not so pleasant a bit better now because I entered the speed limit zone 60 before it was 100 yes. it's not crazy traffic but it's like one or two cars coming every minute you're constantly on the side hope they see you huh. okay made it along the road First stop will be there. It's a public toilet. Uh, fill up water, brush teeth, and maybe use the toilet. So I have to decide that the road is stupid, stupid idea. It's too much traffic, not pleasant. And who wants to see me walking for 16 kilometers on the road? Yeah? You want me to be in the mountains and have show you some nice views and not suffer for I don't know how many hours before the hike starts. Okay, fast forward. I'm at the beginning of the hike now. And I did not walk and did not take a bus because I just missed uh, the one at 10.30 and then uh, the next one would have been a lunchtime. And I don't know, I'm not a hitchhiking person. So <laughs> just opened the taxi app that I had used in Svalva ordered a taxi and was super easy. Hey, and first time ever I got to had a ride in a Tesla taxi. So it was cool. First time ever in a Tesla car. Oh, wild here. Do I feel bad that I took a taxi? No. To some of you who might feel not adventurous enough but this is my trip I want to enjoy myself it's the same with the West Highland Way that I did last May in Scotland it has to be in balance yeah? I want to enjoy myself but also get a little bit out of my comfort zone and yeah, respect to everyone who does the stretch without a taxi just well hitchhiking is the obvious mean of transport here or even more respect to people who hike it apparently I just met the guy who overtook me yesterday you know the embarrass embarrassing moment with the burping I burped and then he was behind me 
so he was very fast uh, he was already almost here at the start of the hike when I overtook him in my taxi and he was super yeah ult ultra light hiker and then when he arrived here at the start and I had a little chat with him he sounded French to me and he walked the whole way but he started walking very early in the morning and said early morning was not so much traffic and yeah the way he walked was a really speed hiker <laughs> and he he could not believe that I carried 20 kilos with me and said oh my god the backpack empty is already three kilos oh my god yeah I'm not an ultralight hiker not my style I like the heavy duty thing <laughs> okay let's find the hike here Interesting how this comfort zone topic comes up again on this hike. Because I already philosophized about personal comfort zone uh, during my West Highland way. I don't remember what day it was, but basically it is it says that comfort zone is not an objective thing, it's an you know everyone has known personal border where between comfortable and uncomfortable and the uh, adventure starts there where you cross this little personal border of yourself a little bit yeah you if you do it more often maybe you can this border changes For me, during the West Highland Way in Scotland, my comfort zone was already, uh, or I, I was already out of the comfort zone with that hike, and the wild camping on top was then too much for me. So I basically only wild camped one and a half nights, and the rest was campsites. But then I got the chance to do another hike this year so decided on this one two weeks Lofoten crossing and I thought okay here I just challenge myself a little bit more yeah like I said the comfort zone is not this border can be moved so after West Island way I was already used to some things and now on this hike I will do even more things but it doesn't mean that I will completely rock and crazy here, huh? <laughs> Very windy! <laughs> Difficult weather at the moment because it is sunny because of the sun at the same time there's this whew, super arctic cold wind that's why I have to wear a jacket it's just very it hurts my neck and hurts my ear it's so cold oh so beautiful So about that comfort zone thing again, yeah, I will not go crazy here. Uh, I'll just tell you my idea, what I had in mind. So this is mainly wild camping here, yeah, because just because there's a lack of campsites on the way. So my plan was first night campsite, because there was one, 
I didn't make it there, I wild camped. Then second night I wanted to wild camp, but there weather was horrible. I felt not so good, so I decided it's the best to take the upgrade to a room on the campsite. Then third night, yesterday, wild camp. Fourth night, tonight, will be wild camp. Tomorrow, fifth night, it's kind of half way in. So, and there's no, I will be around Lackness there. There's no campsite. So there I had already planned and booked a room. So a very simple room with shared bathroom and shared kitchen and things like that. Very convenient. And the uphill section here. It's all right. Good path. Slow and steady as always. I am speed and I go slow. <laughs> On the whole hike I just saw two other hikers. It's a, a couple there. A couple with three dogs. Yeah. Three hikers. Uh, two hikers. Plus me, three. No one else. <laughs> and so it's just the first day I was busy and since then it's like always always by myself. Enjoying the view by myself. Path got a bit steeper and more rocky in the end. And I checked the map again. We apparently go to a summit. Sorry for the misinformation or for the lack of information. Uh, we will reach Dal, Dal Stuba or the Dal Stuba. We'll put the name there. 540 meters. That means I'm still not there. It's still 170 meters. So that's definitely not the highest point there. Eh? I wonder where it is. Okay, there it is. <laughs> ah, nice long ridge height there. Oh, crazy the views. Crazy. <laughs> oh, the heck. <laughs> the mountain has glasses. <laughs> That's funny. <Whew. sighs> Made it.
okay, it was the summit. Interesting how all the way up it was so windy and then up here <laughs> there's almost no wind, just a little breeze. Ha. So I already spent some time here, you saw the videos, the dronies. Now it's time to move on. Oh, it's already three, quarter past three. <sighs> Let's see, I think now it goes down and then somewhere up again. <laughs> Always goes up and down here. Beautiful day, what a beautiful scenery. Awesome. But before the wind picks up again, let me quick wrap up this whole story with the comfort zone. So my idea was day one camping. I did wild camp instead. Day two I wanted a wild camp. Instead I went to a campsite, upgraded to a room because weather was very bad and I felt like shit. Beep. Uh, day three yesterday wild camp was like was planned like that. Tonight wild camp planned like that. Day five uh, I will be in Lackness and I have reserved a room there and can do my laundry and uh, there's no campsite there. Otherwise I would have chosen a campsite. So but I don't say no to the room. So if people don't want to stay in Legnes, they would tomorrow they would finish the hike like afternoon, I would say, in Legnes, and then they can catch a bus for like 15 minutes through the uh, tunnel to the next island. And this tunnel you're not allowed to walk. So you have no choice. You have to catch this bus or hitchhike or take a taxi. So there's an, uh, there are two, there's one late afternoon bus, there are several buses from Legnes, but the ones you can probably reach is one at six-ish and then there's another one at nine-ish and then 15 minutes just through the tunnel and then on the other side, uh, I forgot the name of the place, but there you can immediately find uh, wild camping spots. So that's an option, yeah, if you don't want to stay in Legnes, uh, like I have chosen, just catch the bus and then you can wild camp. Yeah. Then for me, my plan after Legnes, that's then day six, uh, will be wild camp again. And yeah, uh, Nussdorf, I think. Then next night, day seven, will be campsite, Ramberg. Then day eight, it's wild camp, the nine is wild camp. I forgot, I think the other ones are all, I'm pretty sure the rest is wild camping until the end. Yeah. So I think the path is down here over this hill there down to this tiny lake and then goes up again to these three lakes. I'm not sure if that's the destination or not, but I think I saw it on the map somewhere. Almost down. In order to go up again, yeah. Path is in good condition. Nothing to complain here. Nothing compared to that mudslide yesterday evening. So fingers crossed here. Okay, I met more hikers. So a uh, couple. They're also doing. Oops. Careful, Matsi. They're also doing Lofoten crossing, but opposite direction. So they must be on, I don't know, day seven or something. And yeah, I think they were also French, which is interesting. That, because that, I also think this Rando Lofoten website, where this Lofoten crossing is documented, is a French website. It's translated in many languages, but it's a French site. So I wonder if it's, that's why it's, more known or popular in France. Interesting. However, they both had rather small backpacks, medium size, I'd say. But of course, it's an advantage if you hike in a group, you can share 
uh, or can spread out some of the things that you use together. For example, they probably use a tent together and then they both just have to carry half a tent. <laughs> Same with the food, they will cook together, so carry half of it. Or half. One carries the food, the other the gas cartridge, things like that. That's where we came from, on that one. Came down there along the ridge, then down this mountain, down to the valley, came up here, now here. And now walk up here. Dip. Hopefully find some drinking water there. And just five minutes later there's a stream. I don't even have, don't even have to go all the way up. Hooray! I'll fill up my water bottle here. Have a good get hydrated before going up. Whew. Okay, arrived at the little area with the lakes here. More lakes. Yeah. Very bright suddenly here the the, the rocks and the path. So of course I don't have to worry about the time because I carry my bed with me and my food. So I can I always try to find a spot at 9, late is 10 p.m. and just sleep. But the problem then is, then the next day will be longer. Eh? And I'm already doing that since a couple of days. If you remember, and if you have watched all my videos of the Lofoten crossing, uh, the first day I was already, I was very slow and didn't make it to the campsite. I was like three kilometers before. Then the next day I had to, to add, I had to add another one hour, maybe a bit less, to the next day hike. Yeah? That meant that I was already late. Ah, sorry, I have to change. I was already late then for that hike. Then what was next? Day three. Yesterday, I also I was slow again. I didn't make it to as far as I wanted to, which meant that this morning I had to walk one hour along the path and the gravel road to get to the start of day four, to the bus stop. When I arrived there and checked, uh, the bus was gone. So same then today, if I don't make, make it at least close to the itinerary spot, to the destination spot of today. Oh, very muddy here. If I don't make it at least close to it, then tomorrow will be longer again. So it always accumulates, adds up on the next day. But it's always time for a little stop, hydrate. And snack. Okay, I'm on the gravel road now. You can tell by the electricity cables and houses down there that there are more people living here, a bit more civilization. We're getting closer to Legnes. Arrived there tomorrow. So, but gravel road is good because it means it's not an obstacle. Oh, sorry, should turn the camera around and talk with you with my face in the picture. Yeah, gravel road, I don't mind at the moment because it means um, no obstacle in terms of steep path, muddy, 
things like that. So I can walk normal and means that the 10 kilometers are possible today. No, six, 10 past six. I am speed, I can do that. Well, that's very funny. We're here on the gravel road, but no, no house here, no nothing. But it's a toilet. Why on earth? Hmm. Hmm. Well, unfortunately, I don't have to go at the moment. I'm sure it's a nice toilet. Thank you for whoever put the toilet there. <laughs> okay, walked along the gravel road a little bit and almost missed the junction. This little path in here. I only knew because I was checking the map and I knew, okay, there would be something turning left here. So I was looking for it. So there was no sign, nothing. Have your map, yeah, and don't miss the junctions. Okay, approaching uphill part again. I don't think it goes up to the mountain. The path will go to the left of it. But still, it's a bit, a bit uphill at the end of the day. And it's not the last uphill part. It's a bit up and down. If I really want to make it. Ooh, what, uh, where am I filming it? Here I am. I'm here, hello. <laughs> it's a bit up and down if I really want to make it to the destination lake. Whew. I'm speed. So far so good. Path is not difficult. It's so not too steep. That's the view. Okay, path goes all the way up. <laughs> but 300 meters now. I don't really know how much higher we have to get today. Was it 420? Oh, maybe a surprise. So apparently the path continues a bit more uphill. Yoohoo! I am speed. I am speed. I am speed. When I have problems to see because the sun is right in front of me. <laughs> Cannot even see where the pass is going. Whew. Okay. Goodbye that side of the mountain. I guess leaving now to this side of the mountain. Crazy. Sorry, not much interesting content here at the moment. I'm tired. I'm just functioning, meditating, meditative state while I'm walking here. I mean, for me it's hard, but the path is pretty cool. It goes down, seems to be going down there into that valley again, and after that I have to go up again. So, it's really interesting, but tough. But I am speed. At 8 p.m. I am 8 p.m. speed. I think path now goes down there, on the way, and then goes up that direction again. Woohoo! Into the sun! Yay! Just saying hi to the camera once in a while to say I'm still alive, still here. Reached a little junction here. Ah. Oh. tint. No. At least over there. Looks like a 
private hut because it's not on my map and it's not where I'm going. I think the path goes up there again behind the hut. Check, check. Just checking in with the camera again. It's 9 pm. No. Still on the way up again. Have a quick check in. Just realizing that the path goes up here again. You somehow out there, I think. Yeah. Do -do -do. Oh, quarter to ten. I'm ready to camp somewhere. The only thing I'm missing is water. To fill up water. If I find water, I will set camp. It's time. Today's late night dinner is vegan dal with rice at half past 11. But what a spot here. <laughs> See how the vegan dal is. Mm. Midnight snack. This is done. Mmm. Mmm. That's a good one. Oh, nice and salty. That's what I need now. <laughs> so, I also filled up my water bottle from the from a tiny lake over there. Normally, lake water is not yeah, recommended to use, but I have a filter and I googled before and checked should be fine with lake water. What I did was one hour ago I had a couple of zips of the filtered lake water and now I'm waited for stomach reaction but seems to be everything fine and now I drink it. Alright, let me finish the dinner and then it's time to go to bed. The tent camera will say goodnight later. So hello, tent camera. Tent is set up again inside. Ooh, socks are oh, making a nice aroma. <sighs> Keeps the flies away. 
Okay. Uh, it's yeah, just after midnight. I hope I can catch some some sleep. <clears throat> Tomorrow uh, I'm still three kilometers away from uh, the actual end of today's hike. So it means I have to add three kilometers to tomorrow's hike, which means makes tomorrow's hike uh, 17 kilometers, I think, to Legnes. So that's still quite long. Uh, however, it should be easy. It's mainly downhill. That's, look, that's how it looks like on the map. And yeah, I'm in a little bit of a hurry because I want to be there before the Intersport shop closes and they close at 5 p.m. Because there I need to buy or want to buy uh, my trekking food, the dry food. They have it and I cannot get it in the supermarket. So it's very important that I'm there before 5. Everything else is fine. Supermarkets are open until 9, I think, or 8 or 9. So just that Intersport shop closes at 5 p.m. So that's my first thing when I arrive in Lackness, go directly there. <laughs> Other than that, um, thank you for joining me on today's hike. The end was quite tiresome. Well, for me, <laughs> it was very hard. I'm happy I found this really nice camping spot. And now I'm charging some things already here. And now I will also charge this thing here. Charge myself. Yeah. Thank you. I'm Speed. Good night. See you tomorrow. These weird thoughts that come to my mind. But what about pizza with fish and chips on top? I don't know. Does such a thing exist? If not, then maybe it was a dream.